Hello everyone and welcome to this, my video on equations of straight lines, part of the Year 11 General Maths course over here in Australia, but equally valuable to everyone around the world, because straight line graphs are straight line graphs regardless of what country you're in. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully this video and the series of videos I'm doing are useful. Head over to mathsguru.com and sign up, absolutely free to do so, lessons are all on there, downloadable notes, exam questions for VCAR and all sorts of other stuff as well. Alternatively, head over to um, my YouTube channel. This is my little bit of uh, groveling, if you would. Um, the fact that people watch my videos, I don't think many people subscribe, and so yeah, I get to a point where I'm like, I can't keep doing this, no one watches. So if you head over there and click that button, it gives me a massive thrill when people actually subscribe. And tell your mates and your teachers as well, the, this resource is there, and hopefully a little bit better than others that people are using. All right, so learning objectives, they're behind me. If you want to, pause the video and have a look. But in a previous video, we looked at the basically the basics of a straight line graph and we showed how to bring them up on your CAS calculator to get tables of values and what have you. Hold on a moment, what do you mean? You, you, you didn't watch my previous video? Come on, watch my previous video, it's there on mathsguru.com. But what we found was that the two most important points was that one there, which was effectively my y-axis intercept and my gradient there, which was also really, really important. And we came away and we said, okay, well, we know from year nine that gradient was equal to rise over run, wasn't it? But I get really confused with that minus sign, yeah? So when we had gradient, let's call it M for the moment, is equal to rise over run. You've always got to work out whether you're going across and then down or across and then up. And that minus sign, I sometimes forget it. It would be nice, wouldn't it, if there was another way to be able to do it? Well, actually, there is. And that is using this formula here. Now, if we look at it, it says gradient equals m. We'll come back to that m in a moment because I sadly am going to tell you we're going to change that. Is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you're going to go, huh? And I'm going to go, hold on, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, what is a coordinate? A coordinate is nothing more than an x comma and a y value, an x value and a y value. But if I have lots of coordinates along this line, I can't call them all x comma y, can I? Because they're all different. They've all got different values. So could I come up with a better way of talking about each of these coordinates? Well, let's just look at two for the moment. What if I called that x1 comma y1? And I called this x2, comma, y2. Ah, so what I'm saying to you here is that the gradient that we can find is equal to the second y coordinate minus the first y coordinate divided by the second x coordinate divided by the first, sorry, minus the first x coordinate. Hmm, so that y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And all I've really got to remember is the order in which to put these. And actually, believe it or not, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you now. So let's imagine we don't have the graph. Exam questions trying to trick you. All we've given you is two values here. And it says using the formula for the slope of a line, give your answer to two decimal places. So first things first, really important to note, I'm going to have to use my calculator and I'm going to have to have it in the right mode. We'll come back to that in a moment. So I've got my two coordinates. I know that my gradient which is my m value, is y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. Now again, where should you probably write that? In your summary book, right? Unless you remember it, well, that's awesome. So now I'm going to write down my two coordinates. I've got 1, 7, and I've got 4, 2. Right, okay. So I'm going to write this down. Let's call that one x1 and y1, x2 and y2. So all I need to do now is substitute those into my value. So what do we got here? We've got y2. So where's my y2? Oh, it's 2. All right, so let's write that down. 2 minus my y1 value. Well, my y1 value is 7. So I'm just going to put minus 7. Okay. And then I've got my x2. Where's my x2? Is that on there? So that's 4 minus my x1, which is 1, which is there. Oh, and actually, pretty much the hard work's been done for me. But let me see. What have I got? 2 minus 7 is negative five. Four minus one is three. Now I'm gonna fire up my calculator. Let's bring up my TI Inspire. Sorry, class bad guys, but you should pretty much have the same functionality on your calculator. And let's do minus five divided by three. Hit enter. 
and out comes minus 1.66666. But the question wanted it to two decimal places, so in which case I'm going to write minus 1.67. ka -ching. correct answer, I get marks in my exam. But what if I wrote my coordinates the other way around? What if I wrote them as 4, 2 and 1, 7? Is that going to make any difference? Well, let's see. Let's call that now x1 and y1. Let's call that x2 and y2. Well, okay, easily done. So what's my formula? My formula is y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. So my y2 now is 7 minus my y1, which is 2. My x2 is 1 minus my x1 is 4. 7 minus 2 is 5. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And believe it or not, they're exactly the same. And you're going to say, no, they're not. No, they're not. The minus sign's in a different place. The minus sign can go anywhere, really. All right? So your textbook will write it at the front, which just confuses everyone. But that minus sign there can be at the bottom or at the top. It doesn't actually change it. And if I bring up my calculator again just to show you, if I now do what have I got? Minus, sorry, let's delete that. Sorry, trying to go. If I do 5 divided by negative 3, hit enter. That's rubbish. My calculator isn't doing it. So if I did 5... Oh, sorry guys, my calculator is playing up. So let's see what we've got here. I've got 5 divided by negative 3, hit enter, same, 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 same. So what we've shown there is it doesn't actually matter the order of the coordinates just so long as you do the second y value minus the first one and divide it by the second x value and the first one, all right? Ugh, find the slope of the line passing through 2, 8, and 6, 3. All right, we can do this now. So I've got 2, 8 and 6, 3. Let's label them. What have we got? We've got x1, y1, x2, y2. And I know that my formula for my gradient is, what was it, y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. We've got to give it to two decimal places again. All right, so we're going to get a uh, some sort of decimal number. So y2 is 3 again. So we're going to do 3 minus 8 divided by 6 minus 2. So what does that give me? 3 minus 8 is again negative 5. 6 minus 2 is 4. So let's see what comes up on my calculator. So I've got minus 5. He says again, my calculator hates me. Minus 5 divided by 4. And there we get minus 1.25. Turn the calculator off so you can see what I'm writing. And that is to two decimal places. All right. So using that formula, really important. But why do we need to know the gradient? because the equation of a straight line actually has the gradient in it. If we write it correctly, it has the gradient. Now, I know, I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna mess with your heads a bit, or I'm not. Barry is, let's turn that off for a moment. Because that's what you're used to, isn't it? Y equals mx plus c. Not in year 11 and year 12, we're gonna change it. Well, actually we're gonna swap it around and use different letters, if I'm being honest with you. So now, we need you to start using y equals a plus bx. I'm gonna show you why in a minute on your calculator. But y equals a plus bx, well, what is this a? Well, if we go back to my original formula, y equals mx plus c, the c was its number, wasn't it? That letter there <coughs> was a number on its own. So that would suggest to me that that a then, which is seemingly on its own, is now my y-axis intercept. So wherever you saw c before, think a. What was the m? Well, that was the gradient. That seemed to be the thing stuck to the x. Well, again, plus b. That plus b is stuck to my x, and so the b value here is my gradient of slope. And I know that's going to take a little while for your brains to, to get used to, but that's pretty much what we've got to do. So let's see here. Write, find, and write the equation of a straight line. Okay, so first things first. We know the equation of a straight line is given now by y equals a plus bx. So what do we got to find first? Well, a is my intercept. <sighs> Do I know what my int... Oh, hold on a moment. They've given me a graph. And we know the intercept is the point it crosses. But more importantly, the y value, right? We want this y value, which if I read it off, actually is 1. So I now know my a value is 1. What's this plus b rubbish? Oh, <laughs> isn't the gradient? All right, so how am I going to find the gradient? Well, I can do counting squares. So we can go across here. And we can go up here. Now, again, when I say counting squares, not a good idea because I know that starts at 0 and ends at 2. So there is 2. I know that one there starts at 1 and ends at 7. So that is 6. 
So if I'm going to use gradient equals rise over run, then we're going to have the rise of 6, the run is 2, my gradient's going to be 3. So I'm now going to do plus 3x. Now why is it plus 3? Because my gradient is sloping up. That is a plus 3, that is a positive gradient, that has to be a plus 3, and the world goes crazy because we've done it. Yay! Is there another one? Well, reading values from equations. If we now know that our equation can be written as y equals a plus bx, then we know, so long as my equation starts with the y, then we should be able to read off the values of a and the values of b. And the a is the intercept and b is my gradient. All right, so let me see what we've got. Write down the y-intercept and the slope of each of these straight lines. So let's look at this one here. y equals minus 6 plus 9x. So y is equal to minus 6 plus 9x. First question, does it start with just the y equals? Are they trying to trick us? No, it's just the y equals. Is it written in the form of a plus bx where the x term is on the end? It is. They're not trying to trick us. So in which case, the number that's on its own is my y-intercept. Now, I always write these as a coordinate. So my, for that one there, my y-intercept would be equal to 0, comma, minus 6. All right? Now, I know probably the textbook and other people will say, well, it's just minus 6. A y-intercept is a coordinate. I'm going to put that there. What about the slope? Well, which one of these is the slope? Well, the slope is the one that's in front of the x when it's written like that. So in which case, I would say that my slope is equal to 9. For that first one there, what about the next one? y is equal to 10 minus 5x. Well, again, is it written with the y on its own? Yes. So there's the y on its own we wanted. Is the x term at the end? Yes. So in which case, the first term is my y-intercept. And I'm going to write that as 0, comma, 10. And then my slope in that situation is negative 5. Why is it negative 5? Because that's a minus 5 stuck to the x, and that is going to be my slope. Here's some trick questions. y equals minus 2x. y equals minus 2x. Hold on a moment. <laughs> panic, panic, panic. It's, no, no, no. It's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong. No, it hasn't gone wrong. Right? What is the value here? Well, it's supposed to be an a, but there is nothing there for the nothing there is a zero. So obviously in that situation, I could write that as zero minus 2x. So in this case, my intercept is actually the origin and my slope is minus two. Now, what about the next one? y equals, sorry, let's try that one again. y minus 4x equals five. Now, can you see the trick? Is the y on its own? Mm. So the first thing I've got to do is get rid of that minus 4x by adding 4x to both sides. So y becomes equal to 5 plus 4x, and lo and behold, I have all of the information that I need. Yay! Absolutely amazing, because I can say, therefore, that my intercept is 0, 5, and my slope is 4. Now again, all of this takes practice, and the more practice you do, the better you're going to get at it. And obviously your summary book, write a good summary book. If there's anything here that I'm making sense or isn't written down, then obviously, you know, add it. It's awesome. Hold on, what are we doing now? Write down the equations of the straight lines. Ah, oh, they're trying to trick us. So now we're going to write equations. That's okay, we can do that. So A. We know that for part A, let's not worry about that, that our equation all has to be Y equals A plus bx. And what is my a value? It's my intercept. Oh, well for part a, what are they saying my intercept is? It's 9. So all right then, I just write 9. What is my slope? It's 6. But more importantly, plus 6 is a positive number. So I'm just going to write 9 plus 6x. Whoa. What about part B? Uh, y equals a plus bx. I always write this down so I don't stuff it up. And the more times I write it down, the more chance it's going to fit in my head. Right, what is my intercept? It's 2. So in this situation, that's going to be y equals, let's write a y there, 2. And my slope is minus 5, so I'm going to write minus 5x. And the last one, I got my y equals a plus bx. So my y equals, what's my y-intercept? Oh, it's negative 3. What's my slope? Positive 2. And there we go. So that equation is really important. 
Now, sketching straight line graphs. If we know the gradient and intercept, we can use it to sketch a straight line. So now, what they're trying to say is we have an equation of y equals 8 plus 2x. We've got y is equal to 8 plus 2x. And we know that's in the form of y equals a plus bx. Well, what does the value of a stand for? Oh, it's my y-intercept. So actually, they've given me a coordinate value there because we know the y-intercept is going to be at 0, 8. So if I go along to 0, 8, there we go. That must be a coordinate on my point or a point on my graph. The only thing we now need to try and work out is what on earth this plus 2 stands for. Well, it's the gradient. And gradient should always be written as a fraction. Whole numbers can always be divided by one, and that's going to be a fraction. And now we can look at this and say, well, because we know that my gradient is rise over run, the number on the bottom is how many squares we go across. So there's my one. So for every one square across I'm going, the number on the top tells me how many squares either up or down I'm going. Now I'm gonna go up because it's positive. So now I can just count. I'm going to go, what is it, one square along and two squares up. One square along, two squares up. One square along, two squares up. And believe it or not, we have our nice straight line. So there we go. Y equals 8 plus 2X. Ka-ching. Just by reading off two very important pieces of information. What were they? One, my start value of 8 or my Y axis intercept. And B turning that whole number into a fraction so that I know how many squares across are going and how many up, how many up, that way. And believe it or not, guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Go, go, go and practice. Make mistakes. Let me know if you need any help. I'll do what I can. Um, but there are more videos coming in this series. Please, if you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, it gives me a huge thrill when people subscribe. Um, head over to Maths Guru. It's, it's there for you. Let your mates and your teachers know. And hopefully I'll see you in another video. If not, take care and please stay safe.